Welcome to General Chemistry 2. This is Jennifer Sinyel, your teacher for this subject. Our topic for today is about physical properties of solutions. Okay? So what are solutions? Solutions are basically your homogeneous mixture made up of atoms, ions, or molecules. Okay? So it has two phases, the solute or the dissolved medium, and the solvent, which is the dissolving medium. Okay? So we call solutions in which water is the solvent your aqueous solutions. Okay? So here are some properties of your solutions. The particles are evenly distributed, so you could not really identify the solute already because it is evenly distributed. Okay? So the components do not chemically react with each other, so there is just um, binding of your components. Next is aqueous solutions are transparent. Okay? And components do not separate upon standing. Okay? So if it separates, then it's not a solution. Okay? And the concentration can be changed. Okay? So either by adding your solute or adding more solvent. So we have three types of solutions based on the final state of solution. So we have the solid, liquid, and gas solutions. Okay? So for the solid solution, so we have two types. You have the solid and solid. And we have the solid and liquid. Okay, so for the solid and solid um, solution, the final state is solid, and examples of these are alloys like your 12 karat gold, bell metal, sterling silver, and some jewelry. Okay, so for example, yung 12 karat gold, hindi naman siya pure gold, but meron siyang kasama ang other metals. Okay, so for solid and liquid, the final state of this is solid. So, example is your dental filling. Okay, so it is actually mercury and silver. Now, for liquid solutions, so we actually have your first liquid and liquid. So, the all of these, so final state nila ay liquid. Okay? So, in liquid and liquid, examples, examples ito are rubbing alcohol and vinegar. So, for rubbing alcohol, di ba, if you have um, observed due to the pandemic, di ba, bumibili tayo ng iba't ibang, or nakita natin yung mga percentages of alcohol. So, may 45% alcohol, 75% alcohol. So, your ethyl alcohol is not 100%. Okay? Wala kayong mabibiling 100% sa market. Okay? So, even your um, drinking alcohol, okay, nakikita nyo may percentage ng alcohol na present. So, kasama dun ay water. Now, for liquid and gas, so, examples of these are oxygenated water or carbon dioxide in water. Okay? So, yung mga nasa soft drinks din. So, next we have liquid and solid. So, examples of this is your ocean water and your syrup. Okay? So, next or the last type is your gas. So, gas to gas. Example ay gas. Baka magulat kayo puro gas, 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 gas yan. Okay? Kasi sinabi natin gas, yung lahat ng it's basically the air that we breathe in, okay? Na may kahalo ding other gas particles. Okay, for gas, eh, gas to solid or gas solvent in solid, solute, with, sol with solid solutes, um, examples of these are gas particulates. Okay, so yung mga pollutants na, yung small particulates, kasama yan dyan, okay? Now, types of solutions, based on the amount of solute, you have the concentrated and the dilute one. Okay? So, yung concentrated, you have lots of solute in a small amount of solvent. Yung dilute naman, you have a small amount of solute in a large amount of solvent. Okay? So, when you are making your coffee, okay, kung hindi ka bumibili ng 3-in-1, you could make your coffee concentrated or pwede ring diluted. Okay? Concentrated, sobrang daming coffee granules in your little water. Dilute naman, um, too much water in your um, coffee. Okay? So, how do we form your sol uh, solution? So, always remember, like dissolves, like. Okay? So, for ionic compounds, they are easily dissolved in water. Yung polar compounds, ganun din. But for non-polar compounds, they are insoluble in water. Okay? So, next we have solubility. So, solubility refers to the amount of solute that can dissolve in a given amount of solvent at a specified temperature to produce a saturated solution. Okay? So, it is expressed in grams of solute per 100 grams of solvent at a specified temperature and pressure. So, we have three types. Unsaturated solution, meaning there are more solute dissolved. Saturated solution, no more solutes are being dissolved. And for supersaturated solution, it becomes unstable and nag-start ng magkaroon ng crystals. Okay? 
So, yung unsaturated solution, um, the minimum amount of solute is present in a given amount of solvent at room temperature, okay? So, when you add more solutes, nade-dissolve pa siya. For saturated solution, once you add the solute, the solute is no longer dissolved, okay? So, na-reach na yung maximum amount of solute na pwede ma-dissolve, okay? For supersaturated solution, um, the maximum amount of solute present in a given amount of time, of the solvent, pero at an elevated temperature na siya. Okay? So, nagka-crystallize ngayon yung solution when you apply heat. Okay? Now, there are actually types of solutes based on solubility. So, we have the insoluble. So, um, pag insoluble, less than or equal to 0.1 grams of solute dissolves in 100 grams solvent. Slightly soluble, um, greater than 0.1 grams but less than 10 grams are being dissolved in 100 grams of solvent. And last, yung soluble, uh, meaning greater than or equal to 10 grams dissolves in 100 grams of solvent. Okay, so take note that the solute should be dissolved at room temperature. Okay, hindi pwedeng at heated temperature or at the cooler temperature. Okay, now here are some factors affecting solubility. So first, we have the nature of the solute and the solvent. So always remember like dissolves like. So, if you have a polar solute and a polar solvent, it is soluble or miscible. Kaya alam ginagamit ang term na soluble. Ginagamit ang term na soluble if your solute is solid. Miscible or pag miscibility naman if you are combining liquids. Okay? So, non-polar to non-polar, they are also soluble or miscible. Non-polar to, um, to polar, it is insoluble or immiscible. Okay? If it is an ionic, um, solute and you have a polar solvent, it is um, soluble or miscible. Okay, so another factor would be the effect of temperature. Okay, so for um, solutions like gas and liquid, the solubility actually increases okay, with a decrease in temperature and it decreases with an increase in temperature. Okay, so kapag yung gas nilagay nyo sa liquid, um, mas ano siya, mas soluble siya pag mas ma uh, lamig. Okay? So, yung solubility naman niya, pag, din, din, uh, pag nag-increase ka ng temperature, mas hindi siya na dissolve Kasi nga, ba yung gas molecules nyo, pag nag-increase ng heat, or uh, uh, naglagay kayo, nag-apply kayo ng heat, so yung gas molecules would be moving around. So, mas mahirap siyang ma-dissolve. Okay? Pag solid and liquid naman, it could have endothermic reaction. So, solubility increases with an increase in temperature. Well, for exothermic reaction, solubility decreases with an increase in temperature. Okay? So, next we have the effect of pressure. Ito siguro na-observe nyo sa um, soda, sa soft drinks. Okay? So, as pressure increases, the solubility of gas in the liquid increases. Okay? So, solubility of solids and liquids is not affected. Okay? So, initially, diba, when you shake your soft drinks, actually, kahit nga hindi nyo siya i-shake, so, diba, yung sealed na container, sealed can or sealed bottle. So, actually, yung carbon dioxide nyo siya is under high pressure. And also, there are lots of car um, dissolved carbon dioxide in the soft drinks. Okay? So, once you open that, marirelease nyo yun yung pressure. Some of the bubbles would also come out. Tapos, ang mangyari, diba, parang pag inopen nyo siya, merong, meron kayo maririnig na tss sound. Na-imagine nyo ba? So, pag binuksan nyo, diba, parang tss. So, yun yung, ano, yung paglabas ng, ano natin, ng carbon dioxide. Okay? So, surface area, also, so, the greater the surface area, the greater the interaction between the solute and the solvent. Okay? So, pag mas niliitan yung surface area, so, mas maliit din yung chance of interaction. Okay? So, steering. So, once yung nalo nyo yung, ano, yung solution, it increases the solubility of solids and liquids. Diba pag nag- uh, I mean, example ko talaga is yung coffee. Diba? Pag, pag hindi mo siya hinalo, halimbawa, oh, naglagay ka lang ng coffee, tapos nilagyan mo lang ng water, nakalimutan mo siyang aluin. So, yung solubility niya, uh, hindi pa siya fully dissolved. Okay? Now, let's go to concentration of solutions. Okay? Uh, before we proceed, so let's just have a recap of the factors affecting solubility. So, we have the nature of the solute and solvent, so that's one. Second would be effect of temperature. Third is effect of pressure. 
Then we have fourth, your surface area. Fifth, yung steering. Okay. Now, another way to describe your solutions is through their concentration. Okay, so the concentration is the amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solution. So it can be expressed as percent by mass or the mass of the solute per 100 grams of solution. Parts per million, so it is used when the solute concentration is very low. Mole fraction, when the number of moles of one component to the total number of moles in a solution. Molarity, or simply the ratio of the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. And molality, which is the number of moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Okay? So, we have the formulas here. So, may math tayo ngayon. So, I want you to take um, a screenshot of the formulas because we will be solving our problems later. Okay? So, yan lang siya. Yung mga description na minention ko kanina, Ngayon, uh, express lang siya in mathematical form. Okay? So, for percent by mass, you could use this in solid or liquid. Solid or gas and liquid. So, you have here, so percent mass solution, I'm sorry, percent mass solute. So, we get the mass of the solution. Okay? Percent by mass of liquid and liquid. So, yan, you have volume instead of mass. Okay? So, parts per million, tandaan, per million. So, 1 million yung gagamitin natin. So, for mole fraction, this would be a lengthy um, solving. So, mamaya, let's see the example, the sample problem. Okay? So, molarity and molality are different. Baka sabihin nyo na nabulol lang si ma'am kaya may molality. Okay? So, molarity, we're getting the moles of solute per liter solution. Molality per kilogram solvent. Okay? So, let's have your sample problems. So, first problem, what is the percent by mass of 45 grams of hydrochloric acid in 200 gram solution? Okay. So, use the, pro the formula. You may check. Okay. So, uh, pause the video to solve the problem. To solve the problem, we are going to use this formula. Percent mass solute is equal to mass solute divided by mass of solution multiplied to 100. Okay? Now, if the mass of solution is not given, you simply add the mass of the solute and mass of the solvent. Okay? Now, so we substitute our values for percent mass of your hydrochloric acid. So, we have 45 grams of hydrochloric acid divided by 200 grams of solution multiplied to 100. So, that would simply be 22.5% hydrochloric acid. Okay? So, basic pa tong percentage problems. So, next problem is, what is the concentration in parts per million of a solution that is um, 0.00007% by mass solute? So, the problem is a bit tricky because the given is actually the percentage already and then we are looking for the concentration in ppm. Okay, so our formula for ppm or parts per million is we simply divide the mass of solute by the mass of solution, then we multiply that to 1 million. Okay, so since our given is 0.00077%, um, so we assume or we could actually get the gram solute from that. Okay, so we simply divide it by 100%. Okay, so to get now the gram solute per gram solution. Okay, so this is our value for the gram solute. So we now we compute for the parts per million. So we simply substitute our value. So 0 0.00000077 gram solute divided by gram solution multiplied to 1 million. So we arrive at 0 0.77 parts per million. Okay. Now, are you ready for more? So, the next problem, how many grams of water is needed to prepare 2.5% by mass of 367 grams of, so of sugar solution? Okay, so again, pause the video to solve the problem. So, for the problem, 2.5% by mass sugar solution means that there are 2.5 grams of water per 100 gram sol solution or simply there is 2.5 grams sugar per 97.0 grams water okay so to get the uh, grams of water needed 
So we're going to use or we going we're going to start with the first given. So we were we have 300 grams 367 grams sugar solution. So we multiply now that to the value of your water per solution. Okay? So you now have 97.5 grams water divided by 100 grams solution. Okay? So our final answer would be 355 uh, I'm sorry, 357.8 grams water, okay? So, in analyzing your problems, you need to be careful, okay? So, yung percentage naman, kapag wala kayong nakitang mga value, so, you assume, you always assume that there is a 100 gram solution, okay? So, since ang given is 2.5%, diba? Sabi kanina, 2 point, sabi dun sa problem, 2.5% by mass, Okay, so, ang gagawin natin, eto siya, i-assume natin na 100 gram yung solution. Kasi nga, ba 2.5% over 100%. Okay, so, 2.5 grams per 100 gram solution. Okay? I hope that's clear. So, next, this one, we're getting the mole fraction. So, a solution is made by dissolving 1.25 grams sodium sulfate and 65 grams water. Okay, so get the mole fraction of the solute and the solvent. So you may refer, you may um, replay the video to check the formula. So our strategy for getting the mole fraction of the solute and solvent is first, we get the number of moles of solute, which is your sodium sulfate. Okay, so to get the moles of sodium sulfate, we need to have the mass of your sodium sulfate and then we divide it to the molar mass of your sodium sulfate, okay? So, usually, I would be providing the molar mass but if it's not given, you compute for the molar mass, okay? So, review your general chemistry 1 concepts. So, now let's proceed. So, I have now 1.25 grams sodium sulfate divided by 142 grams per mole sodium sulfate. Okay, so with this, I could cancel out my units. So I would arrive at, my unit now would be moles. So I have now 0 0.0088 moles sodium sulfate. Okay, now I have my moles of solute. Now I would get the mole solvent. So my solvent is water. So same thing. So you get the mass of water given in the problem divided by, by the molar mass of water. So... I have 65 grams of water divided by 18 grams per mole of water. So, again, I cancel out my grams. So, I have now 3.61 moles of water. Okay? Now, next step is you get the total number of moles. Okay? Now, you have your mole solute and your mole solvent. So, total, we're going to add them up. Okay? Now, solute, you have your sodium sulfate. So, 0.088 plus 3.61 for water. So, that is uh, 3.6188 or 3.62 moles. Okay? So, now we could get the mole fraction of the solute and the solvent. Okay? So, we're going to simply substitute the values for so, X solute is equal to the moles solute divided by the mole solution so that would be um, 0 0.0088 moles divided by 3.62 moles so we have 0 0.0024 now for the solvent so same ganun then so you have the, the mole solvent divided by mole solution so we have 3.61 moles divided by 3.62 moles so you have 0.997 okay so to check if you have the correct answer so you simply add them up you should get 1 as your answer. Okay? So, 0 0.0224 plus 9.997 is 0.9994 or we have 1. Okay? Okay, so let's have another example. So, for this one, we calculate the molarity of the following solutions. So, you have 0.2 moles of sodium hydroxide in 100 milliliter solution and 2.5 grams calcium chloride in 250 milliliter solution. Okay, so just a reminder, you check the units before you compute. So for molarity, remember that our formula is number of moles solute divided by liter solution. Okay, so the final unit of your 
formularity would be moles per liter or simply your capital M. Okay? So, in the problem, we are given 0.2 moles of sodium hydroxide in 100 milliliters solution. Okay? So, we write now the number of moles and then we write now the liter solution. Now, remember, we need to convert our unit so that we'll have liter. Okay? So, 100 milliliter, we convert that to your liter. So, I could cancel now my milliliters. So, I have now my final unit. So, you multiply and then you divide. So, you have 2 moles per liter or your 2M. So, pwedeng ganyan din yung pag-express um, ng answer. So, next we're given 2.5 grams calcium chloride in 250 milliliters solution. So, again, may conversion tayo. So, since mass of calcium chloride yung given, we're going to use the molar mass to get the moles present in the calcium chloride. And again, we write now your um, liter solution. So, kailangan natin siya ulit i-convert. So, we multiply that to 1,000 milliliters. Okay? So, I cancel out my units. So, grams, calcium chloride. Then, tanggalin na natin itong si milliliters. So, our final answer would be 0 0.091 moles per liter. Okay? So, I hope um, you're still there. So, next problem, we calculate the number of moles of solute in each of 100 ml of your 0.5 uh, moles per liter of your sulfuric acid. So, in the problem, we are asked to get the number of moles of solute in your 100 milliliters of 0.5 moles per liter of your sulfuric acid. Okay? So, we write now our values. So, we start with the 100 milliliter solution, you convert that, then you multiply that to your 0.5 moles per liter. So you cancel your units to arrive now at moles. Okay, so final answer would be 0 0.05 moles. Okay, now you could actually do the conversion on a separate um, part of your solution. Pwede hindi na siya i incorporate dito sa ano natin, sa main solution. Pero, much better if you include it kasi mamaya makalimutan natin na mag-convert. Okay? So, next problem, calculate the mass of solute needed to prepare 500 milliliters of 2 moles per liter of your hydrochloric acid. Okay? So, for the next problem, we are actually also getting the mass of solute needed to prepare 500 milliliters of your hydrochloric acid, okay? So, given na ulit ang molar mass. So, same thing with the previous example. So, I, again, I write my liter solution, I mean the volume. Then, you convert that to your liters. Then, I have now my 2 moles per liter. And I use the molar mass so that I could get the final mass of our uh, solute. Okay? So, yan. I-highlight ko lang yung cancellation of units. Okay? Important talaga mag-write ng units para tama yung ano natin. Yung final unit. Okay? So, the final answer now is 36.45 grams of your hydrochloric acid. So, next problem... What volume of solution is prepared from 2 grams sodium hydroxide with a concentration of 0.6 moles per liter? So, for the next problem, we are looking for the volume of the solution. So, again, we start with the given. So, we have 2 grams of your sodium hydroxide. And then, you use the molar mass of your sodium hydroxide. So, that is 40 grams per mole. And... You have now your 0.6 moles per liter, okay? So, you cancel them out, your units. So, and then you do your computation. So, 2 divided by 40 times 0.6, our answer is 0 0.083 liters, okay? Okay, last problem for molarity. Calculate the molarity of a concentrated hydrochloric solution that is 20% by mass hydrochloric acid. Okay, the density of hydrochloric acid is 1.18 grams per milliliter. 
Since there is no volume of solution given, we assume 1 liters of the solution. Okay? So, we solve for the mass of the solution by using the provided density. Okay? So, first, we get the mass of the solution. Okay? So, mass of solution is 1,000 milliliters per... Then, you multiply that to your density to get the mass of the solution. So, 1,000 milliliters, cancel them out, then you have 1,180 grams solution. Okay? So, yung 1 liter natin, ginawa na natin siyang 1,000 milliliters dito instead of doing the conversion. Okay? So, next, we could now get the mass of the solute. So, we start with your mass of the solution, which, which is 1,180 grams. Then, you multiply that to your... Um, given. Okay? So, 20% yung sinabi. So, 20 grams per 100 grams of your solution. So, our answer is 236 grams of your hydrochloric acid. Now, we could continue. We could now get the molarity. So, I have 236 grams hydrochloric acid. Multiply that to the molar mass and then you convert to liter. Now, you have 6.47 moles per liter. Let's go to molality. Okay? So, I want you to calculate the molality of the following solutions. So, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 moles of phosphoric acid in 250 grams water and 40 grams, I mean 0.4 grams of sodium carbonate dissolved in 150 grams of water. So, for the first problem, we have 0.5 moles of phosphoric acid in 250 grams water. So, I start with my 0.5 moles of phosphoric acid, then I multiply that to the grams of the solvent, so 250 grams of water, but since it's grams, I need to convert that to kilograms, so um, we have 1,000 grams per 1 kilogram, so the final answer, so we simply multiply and divide, you have 2 moles per kilogram, okay, the second problem, so we have 0.4 grams of sodium carbonate. So, since it is grams, again, you're going to get the molar mass. Or you're going to use the molar mass. So, the molar mass is 106 grams sodium um, carbonate per 1 mole sodium carbonate. Cancel my grams. Then, I have 150 grams of water as the gram solvent or the mass of the solvent. So, again, I need to convert that to your 1,000 grams of your solvent or water, okay? So, I'm left with moles and kilograms, so the answer is 0 0.025 moles per kilogram, okay? So, you could pause, you could replay the video if you have um, questions. So, the physical properties of solutions are already discussed, and we have different ways of describing your solutions. It could be by solubility and concentration. Okay, so next video would be um, related still to your solutions, but we'll have more computation. So we'll start with, or we'll have your stoichiometry. Okay, so that would be all for today's video. So I hope you learned something. Bye!